What's going on you guys, Fulster and I'm back with another video. Today's video I'll be doing an in-depth Nidalee jungle guide. She is the best AP jungler you can play right now in my opinion. The only one that comes re close really is Elise, but she doesn't really farm as well as Nidalee does. And since this new jungle allows you to farm and get really far ahead in levels, Nidalee is definitely the better pick of the two of them. So definitely pick Nidalee up, I highly recommend it. She does take a little bit of skill to get used to it first, but... After a while, you get the hang of it. Now, let's get right into the runes. This is the rune set that I use on Italy specifically. There are a few options you can change if you want to, but... I mean, let's get into it. I go for Electrocute on Italy. It's simply the best one to go for. It gives you the most burst damage straight up. And that's all you really want. You want to land that spear, go in with WQ, and then just one-shot someone, someone as much as possible. That's three hits that will pop your Electrocute, and just that way. You can also always follow it up with an E as well, if it takes a little too long for your, like, as soon as you hit that spear and then for you to go in. If it takes a little longer, then your E will pop your Electrocute as well, but this is just the best one to go for, and it's definitely the one you want. Also, combine that with Sudden Impact, Nidalee, of course, you dash in with your W, you get the Sudden Impact, you get more, like, penetration, the Magic Pen, and then that way you just deal way more damage when you go in. Now here, there's a few options. You can go Eyeball Collection, you can go Zombie Ward, you can go Ghost Borrow, anything you want, really. Zombie Ward, Zombie Ward and Ghost Borrow definitely can work really well in Italy as well, because... If you invade people on ward and get that vision control going, then zombie ward, for example, as soon as your ward dies, you have another ward, so you can then... Like, it's it's really good to have zombie ward on Nidalee if you're going for a very heavy invade style of Nidalee, so definitely, in that situation, pick up zombie ward. I would, like, towards the higher elos, vision control becomes way, way, way more important, so at that point, zombie ward just becomes so much better, but... If you're playing Nidalee towards the lower elos, then honestly, Zombie Ward isn't that good. Just because of the fact that, one, they're, like, the vision control doesn't really matter too much. Because people don't even look at their wards. So, like, look at their vision. They still die to the ganks. Like, if a laner wards, then, like, the jungler just walks over the ward and he still gets the kill. Like, it's that sad. So, honestly, in lower elo, eyeball collection is better. In higher elo, it definitely would go with Zombie Ward. Because you just get way more vision control and then your wards last longer. And that way, it just overall helps you more. Now here, though, it's a pretty simple choice. You want to go for the Revenant Hunter on Italy. The reason for that is it heals you a lot for single target abilities. If, like, per bone... Uh, per, like, you can see how much healing this already is. Like, it's pretty crazy. It stacks up five times. You can definitely just... You land a spear, you get so much health back. Especially if it's a max range spear. You go in with, like, your WQ, you get even more health back. So that really helps you out in just one of your one situations against the enemy jungler. And that's just definitely the one you want to go for. Now, on the second tree, you have a few options. You can go for the sorcery tree. You can go f also go for the precision tree if you want to. The other two trees, not too great on Italy, but yeah. The sorcery tree, the options you have is celerity combination with water walking. I mean, honestly, the option you have is celerity, just in general. Because if you throw a spear from the um, from a from a brush, you're going to get more movement speed whilst you're in it. So it gives you more damage on your spear. And then you will deal more damage like that. So ganking like that becomes a little easier. Plus, having more movement speed on Nidalee is never bad because you will always be running around the map farming and then trying the counter jungle and all that kind of stuff. So Celerity, definitely a very good pickup on Nidalee and the one I would recommend you to always get if you go for the Sorcery Tree. Now here, there are two options. I personally prefer Water Walking a little more because you gain that extra movement speed, which allows you to get in position to counter jungle a lot easier. So definitely Water Walking is my preferred choice, but you can also go with Scorch because... As soon as you, you, like, you can use this Scorch to deal that little bit of extra spear damage, maybe, if you want to snipe some laners, or just a, a little damage boost. Scorch, on average, will give you about 1,000 to 2,000 damage in your game, in, like, depending on how, how long your game is, like, 20 to 30 minutes. It gives you about 1,000 to 2,000 damage-ish if you hit enough spears, if you land enough traps, anything like that. Scorch can definitely help you out, just pushing that little bit of extra damage. Combine that with, like, Electrocute Scorch, you can just... Like, you can get the, the ball rolling a little earlier, if you know what I mean. Like, those close fights and like, level 3, 1v1 against the enemy jungler or anything like that. Scores can definitely help you out. So, that's completely up to you. The other option is, you can also go for the Precision Tree and go for the Classic Triumph, like, with Coupe de Grace. Or Coupe de Grasse, or however you say it. You can definitely go for that as well, because this, as soon as you take someone down, you can get that um, health restore plus a little bit of extra gold. Never bad. But then also Coup de Grasse will just help you execute. So you land that spear. It's probably going to put them below 40% health if you land on like a squishy target. And you're decently far ahead. Or like still in the earlier stages of the game. And then you just go in WQ and you deal 
a good amount of extra damage. 10% more damage is a lot. So that's another viable choice on Nidalee as well. If you want to go for a little bit more of the gank heavy route instead of like the focus more on like actually invading and counter jungling route, then this is definitely a good choice to go for as well. So either one of those two setups, whatever you want, whatever you prefer. I mean, test them both out, see what you like. That's definitely all I could say for it. Now, moving on to the item build on Nidalee. Um... You have two starts on Italy. You can start with either the Hunter's Talisman or the Hunter's Machete. It doesn't matter too much. Hunter's Machete is usually better if you want to go for like a quick clear, like a quick clear, like uh, the blue, like a clear, like blue Gromp red buff and then gank top lane or something like that. Because you deal a lot of auto attack, you do a lot of auto attacks in those camps, especially early on. Because early in Italy, your Cougar form doesn't really one shot camps that well. And you just need to auto attack them more so in that situation hunter's machete becomes a lot better and then that way you can definitely just make that work but also the hunter status me can make this work as well because obviously you're going to hit something a lot with abilities because of your kugel form you're going to pounce on them and pounce on them again so either one of the starts is fine it's completely up to you it doesn't necessarily matter too much either one can get you through a full clear pretty easily and either one can give you a like a good amount of speed in your initial clear as well so i mean a lot of people are gonna like tell, tell like leave comments like oh no i start this i start that honestly guys trust me it does not matter at all you can start either one it really doesn't matter and obviously the other one is refillable potion nidalee has built in sustain over e so she doesn't really need too many health potions you can easily get it with a refillable potion and be fine now moving on to like the core build setup the thing you want to go for every single game is the um runic echoes on the red smite is what i do the red smite, the reason I go for red smite, I mean, obviously you can also go with the warding one if you want to take more control, but usually in solo queue, I would definitely just remain with the red smite and just buy a couple pink wards, maybe use your warding totem to help you ward that way, because you need that 1v1 power, especially against the assassins right now. If you're playing against like a Rengar, K6, I don't know, Jarvan that goes full AD, any type of champions like that, if you don't have red smite, you're just gonna get insta gib. And Red Smite will give you a fighting chance and maybe even a chance to just kill them back. Because if then you Red Smite them, they deal a lot less damage. You can hit the spear on them and then you have your Kuga form to one-shot them back. So this is definitely a must, honestly, right now in solo queue for just straight up to survive. Also, like, the Warding one, again, lower elos, definitely wouldn't recommend it there. Warding one is really towards the higher elos and like Challenger and all that kind of stuff, Muscle Challenger. That's where the Warding one becomes better. And then that's where the Warding one becomes debatable to wh whether it's better right now or not. But yeah, lower elos always red, red smite, just that simple. Now here, you have a couple of boots option. You can go for Sorceries uh, or Sorcerer's Shoes. If you're slightly ahead and you want to deal more damage, you can go Ninja Taba. If you're facing something like a Master Yi or anything like that, that does a lot of auto attack damage. You definitely need to have Ninja Tabbies against that or you're just going to die. If you're against a lot of hard CC, you can also go with Mercs as well. Usually the boots I tend to go with aren't Sorks because they like you don't really need the extra damage that much. The one thing you're looking for in Italy is to survive really. So most games I'll go for Ninja Tabbies. Some games I'll go for mercs if I need them, and if I'm really far ahead, I'm doing really well in the early game, I can also go with sorks as well if I want to imp like improve my damage just a little bit more. Those are the, like, the options and those are the situations where you get those. Now, the obviously the main damage item on Nidalee, that's the one you want to always get, is Lich Bane. It gives you a lot of movement speed as well, which is very, very nice on Nidalee. It can make you, like it helps you position, it combines well with Runic Echoes and then also your boots. You're going to have a lot of movement speed to run around with early on, like quite early on. And then also your Google Form W jumps. You can definitely just get around the map really fast and that way you can clear the enemy jungle camps really fast, your own jungle camps really fast and then st at the same time still put up pressure on the map. Now, Lich Bane is obviously a good item on Italy because she has the um, Cougar Form Q. It combines really well with Lich Bane. So you hit someone with their, like a spear, you go in, you WQ them, and then it's pretty much going to insta-kip them because you have Lich Bane and you deal all that extra damage to them right there and then. So it's just the one you want to go for. Like, there's not a debate on that one. Now, after this, there is a lot of variable items you can get. There is the Zonias. This is probably the safest item you can pick up on Italy right after your Lich Bane in most situations. Because it allows you to land a spear from a lot of range. Then run up, W in, Q them, one shot like a target like that. And then press Zonias to make sure you don't get insta kip Because you have to remember you're quite squishy as well on Italy. So that's the way for you to like engage team fights and for you to have your team follow up and all that. So it's probably the safest bet to go for Zonias in most games. But you can also go for like a death cap if you're far ahead. If you want to just get all that extra ability power in, you can go for a Void Staff. 
you can do anything really AP based. You can literally click ability power and look at like, okay, well, what do I want to get? And I, uh, I think this is a very good shout. Let's see, like, I can go for like a Leandris if you want just straight flat magic pen. It gives you 50 magic pen and this gives you like a scaling magic pen, like 40% magic pen. So if like er looking for early game magic pen items, you can go for a Leandris as well. It's going to give you a lot of extra health as well, makes you a little bit more tanky. So, also, Ludens is like a viable switch out that you could get for the um, jungle item later in the game. It gives you more movement speed, more ability power. So, straight up, like, it's definitely a good shout to switch it out as like a final item. Because you do want to have your Red Smite for as long as possible, but your Red Smite won't matter anymore late, late game. Because at that point, anyone that gets close to you, if you don't zone assets, you're going to die instantly. And, like, it's just not worth it. Like, you might as well deal more damage and just have more mobility that way. <laughs> straight, straight up. Now, uh, this is, like, pretty much the choice you have. Honestly, you can also have an Ardent Sensor if you're playing with something like a Kogma. The only situation where I'd ever pick up an Ardent Sensor on Nidalee, right now, like, you, before when Ardent Sensor was busted as hell, then it was just, a, like, a no-brainer every game. But right now, you just definitely only want to pick it up if you have, like, high attack speed-based champions, like a kill or a Kogma, something like that. That, lethal, that, that has lethal tempo and it just goes for the attack speed really hard, then you can go in Ardent Sense to buff them up if they're doing well, and then you can definitely just, like, keep supporting them up and up and up, and then they won't be able to die, especially if you combine that with an Athene's Unholy Grail in Italy, because this will improve your heals quite a lot. Instead of healing for, like, three or 400, you're going to be able to heal someone for, like, six to 700 health. Later in the game, that's insane amounts of extra healing. That's, that's something you want to do if your AD carry is doing well in a game. If you pick up like an Athene's combination with maybe an Ardent, if it's like a Kogma or something, then you're just going to be able to just carry them through the game really hard, but just keep healing them and healing them and healing them. You're going to give them like 100% attack speed extra, plus heal them for like six to 700 every time. If you just, it's actually insane. So in those types of games, you can go for the supportive type Nidalee. So you can, after like a Lich Bane early still, go for like, or maybe like a Lich Bane Zonias early or whatever, and then go finish your build off with like the uh, Ardent Sensor and the Athens on Holy Grail, or maybe just the, Ar like the Athens on Holy Grail if you don't have like a Kogma or a Kill or anything like that, and then finish it off with like a Void Staff to have um, a lot of extra burst damage still from your Lich Bane, and then your Zonia is going to give you a lot of ability power, and then that way you will be able to sustain your AD carry up or anyone in your team up really with an Athens on Holy Grail for like this high amounts of HP heals and then with the Void Staff, the Lich Bane, you'll still be able to land that spear and one-shot somebody to have that engage potential as well. So there's a lot of variables in the build like that. If you have any questions on it, make sure to ask them in the comments below as well. I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, please make sure to hit the thumbs up below. It means a lot. Now let's get right into the gameplay. All right, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you can see, I'm playing Nidalee, of course, into a Rek'Sai. The Rek'Sai matchup for Nidalee is actually pretty decent because you do clear faster than Rek'Sai does, so you can definitely um, get a full clear in while she is only like... She missed like one or two camps still. That's how much faster you can clear on Nidalee. Also, Nidalee's early game against the Rek'Sai in a 1v1 fight. Nidalee should win those. Granted, you hit your spear. If you miss your spear, then it's going to be a problem. But against Rek'Sai, hitting your spear on Nidalee becomes a little easier because... Um, just straight up the fact that if Rek'Sai is buried, uh, buried, you can't see the spear coming that well. So then it becomes much easier to land for Nidalee, especially if she's standing still and you have vision over Rek'Sai and that way she can't see it, she can't see it coming. So that's like an easy way to get that going. Also on this side of the map, on Nidalee, I tend to go for a full clear. Or maybe like, depending on the top lane matchup I guess, if this was like a, a matchup I could actually gank early without Heimer's turrets wrecking me, I might have just gone for a quick clear instead, but honestly, Heimerling or top lane you just need to chill a little bit more and like... It's on Italy, that is. If you have like a hard CC jungler or anything like that that's really good at ganking, then you can definitely get away with it. But in other situations, it's much better to just go for a straight full clear on the first one. Because you do it so fast and then you can just put pressure after you, your initial back. That's a lot better. That's a lot more consistent of a way to play instead of trying to get those early ganks going and then falling behind in CS. Also, as you can see right now, what I mentioned earlier is the fact that I clear a lot faster than Rexa does because... She just got done with her Grump, but then I took the entire extra time to actually do my Krugs as well, or my Golems, and we took a, the same amount of time to actually clear the jungle. Or well, the same amount of time that we that we had, I cleared one extra camp, like one entire extra camp, which is a Krug camp, and that takes quite a while. So the extra speed Nidalee has over Rek'Sai is definitely visible right here. I'm also confused. Wait, did Rek'Sai back? She has two items at this point. Did she actually back? 
That'd be very interesting. I think I missed that. She might have backed. All right, well, um, first clear, I had about 850 gold. I mean, the, the thing I usually like to go for on the first clear on Italy is either, if I have the money for it, like Red Smite and Boots, or I go just straight up for the Wisp, because the Wisp will give me ability power and movement speed at the same time. If you have enough money for the Red Smite and Boots, that's usually what I'll pick up, because Red, having Red Smite in, like, 1v1 potentials, like, 1v1 situations against enemy junglers is a lot better. Plus, you'll have both your jungle, like, jungle items, your um, Talisman effect and your Hunter's Machete effect. That way you can clear a jungle a little easier whilst also just staying a little bit more healthy. So it's a, it's a better way to go to get those boots with the Red Smite if you can on your first back. Now here, I saw that Katarina, Katarina was low, so I just like loop around and then we can definitely dive him because that was full HP. So that's an easy pickup for us right there. I do get the Katarina and all you gotta do after that is just go back to clearing your jungle camps. You're pretty fast as Nidalee at clearing them and it's definitely just worth doing it constantly. If your camps are up, you definitely need to go and clear them. Now right here, I back, I look towards backing. I'm not sure why I don't, honestly. I have no HP, no mana. I mean, I have like half HP, no mana. I have 913 gold. That's definitely an easy back timing. But I guess I just try to go for the bot lane gank. I mean, Trist bombs me and she has pressed the attack. So if I stay in that fight, I'm guaranteed to die. So I'm not sure why I did right there. I should have just backed. I guess I just got like, I guess pinked by Blitzcrank. And I was like, I might be able to try this. But looking back at it, not the smartest of moves. If you have like no HP, no mana, and like you have a good amount, like a decent back, like as you can see at the rest smite with boots back, it's definitely just worth backing. Like you're wasting your time if you're not backing at that point. And that's what I did right there. I just wasted my time. All right, here I hit level six. It's a slightly late level six for your average Nidalee game because she usually is able to steal a lot of the enemy's jungle camps as well and just speed clear and speed clear. So you can hit like level six by... I got no, like the six minute mark or something and I just hit it by the seven minute mark. It's slightly slower, but it's not that big of a deal Right here. I'm just make, making sure that I keep my clear up Heimerdinger is pushed all the way in right now I'm pretty sure he doesn't have any warts. I mean, I can see it right here that he didn't have any warts But I'm pretty sure that uh, Gnar told me that he didn't have any warts So I just walk off top lane and then try to make this play work. He is really low as well I guess I saw that as well. Yeah, he was really low into the Gnar lane So all I have to do is get in range and he just dies I mean, the thing here is, he kind of just wasted that, really, because there was not a chance for him to get out of that situation since he didn't have his flash up. And, like, I, I would not have used that one if I was him. Like, he was guaranteed to die there. That's also something you guys have to remember. If you have, like, the stopwatch, it's a one-time use if you use it from the mastery, or, like, just in general, I believe it's a one-time use. Not too sure on that one, because usually when I get to those items, I finish it anyway. Whoa. Oh, right here, by the way, I spotted the Rek'Sai bot lane, which means that... You look simply, as soon as you see him, or her, I guess, Rex is a female, uh, you see that she doesn't have red buff. I saw that, Kat I mean, Katarina's not going to get red buff, and then Heimerdinger just died, so that means that her blue buff is up, and then that's just simple counter jungle tactics. At this point, she's bot lane, there's not a chance I'm going to get there in time. If I recall and run there, it's going to be too late already, so I might as well punish her for it, and then take her entire top side, because I'm pretty sure every camp would be up. Also, my clear speed right now with the items I have is pretty decent. You have, like, a good, like, good amount of damage when it comes to clearing the camps and then here I just take three of her camps Rexa didn't really get anything bot lane so it's not that worth it for her to to have done that and that's how you punish the enemy jungler really hard now right here I see Heimerdinger pushed up again I mean this is the perfect time for me to just gank him the, the only problem with this is like that ultimate that if that hit me I would have died I'm not sure why he used that one instead of the turret one he might not have a turret up at that point moment in time so that could have been a problem for him but then I just simply land a spear, I red smite him, and I just one-shot him straight up. He is pr quite squishy, he only bought armor. He doesn't have any magic resist really, so I can just get away with that. Now the only problem with that situation is that Rex, I knew that I didn't have my red buff. He knows my red buff is up, and then he takes my, or she takes my red buff from me. So she pretty much used my own tactic against me for ganking top lane like that. Probably the best thing I could have done is just straight up gone to my own red buff, and then like live with that situation. Wow. Now here I got really wrecked, I guess. I, I was like, alright, I guess he gets my red buff, so or she gets my red buff. I just gotta go clear my camps again. And then he also takes my raptor camp in the meantime, I, bet, I guess. If I went to the raptor camp right there, I probably would have been able to 1v1 that Rek'Sai pretty easily. Because all she has right now is a Tiamat, and all I have, I mean, all I have, I have a, a jungle item completed and my Sorks. So that's a pretty insane type of back. Now right here, I'm definitely looking to make a play on bot lane. I mean, the Blitzcrank, he has his hook. He can definitely make something work if he hooks something. They do get the solo kill on Trist already. I mean, I'm not sure on that flash, to be honest. That was quite a questionable one. Katarina goes in. She does get the um, 
the cork bar sadly, but he was really low, so it was to be expected, really. I mean, I do let get my um, my passive on him, and then at that point, as soon as you get that passive on him, your Q is gonna deal just deal an insane amount of damage, and you're just gonna be able to kill him from any health, like any health that you had right there, which is gonna be gone. Now, right there, I do pick up another few kills. I pick up the Katarina and the Rek'Sai, so I'm five kills right now, five zero and one, seventy three CS, which is not bad. I mean, it could definitely be higher. If I counter jungled a little bit more, a little bit more effective, I could have been pressuring this Rek'Sai a little bit more this game as I... Like, I, if I look back at it, this game, this Rek'Sai has been making some random plays and I definitely could have punished more. And the, the way you punish more is you get vision control in the enemy jungle. So you get that control wards, you place your wards in the enemy jungle and then you track them. And then that way you can definitely just keep taking their camps and then take them on respawn. Because as soon as you take the camp, you'll know when it's going to respawn and it's going to just pop back up and then you just go pressure there again. Because you're so far ahead of Rek'Sai and this Rek'Sai is building armor against you as a Nidalee, or in, in this specific game at least, then I can just still just straight up one-shot him because land a spear on a buried Rek'Sai, just one-shot him straight up. I don't think, if, if my spear is long, like long enough range, I'll deal enough damage to just completely delete him, especially with a Sheen right now. A Sheen on Nidalee is actually insane because it will amplify your damage by so much if you make sure you use the Sheen proc with your Q. Don't use any auto attacks in between, you have to make sure that Sheen proc hits your Q. Now right here, again, I just go for bot lane. We tried to gank earlier, we forced some summoners out, and then all you have Blitz has to do is land a hook, and then we just kill him. So we get the Thresh for free. Thresh is the best target to go for, by the way, because especially if the um, if they're walking in the same line, because if you go for the Trist, Thresh can throw the Lantern, and then that way your gank's gonna fail, because then the Lantern can save Tristana if you don't have enough damage. So definitely, if you go for a gank, try to go for the Thresh. He is priority. Like any type of gank, really. So, yeah, that's definitely the one to pick. After Thresh, you can always look to kill the AD carry as well. Unless you know you can one-shot the AD carry, then that's also good, but yeah. Another thing to note this game is I have a Kog'Maw AD carry as a Nidalee, and that's actually really good. This is the type of game where you can go like Arden Sensor and Chalice Nidalee, because all you gotta do really is protect your Kog'Maw. Your heal already gives you a, an insane amount of attack speed boost just in general, so you can have the Kog'Maw have like 4.0 attack speed if you have lethal tempo. And most Kog'Maws go for lethal tempo, so that way you can definitely make sure that you just make him a monster and just keep sustaining him. Now Rek'Sai here again, just taking my jungle camps, priori prioritizing them over them, uh, uh, over his jungle camps really. That's all I wanted to say, I'm not sure why that was that difficult. Because like his bot jungle was completely up, Triss took it from him of course, but like... I don't know why he wanted to take mine. I guess he, I mean, it's fine. Like, it's pretty smart from uh, uh, on his part, just punishing me for being somewhere on the map. So taking my other camps, that's definitely what I said earlier as well. So this, yeah, that's definitely something to think note of. Right here, I'm sitting on quite a lot of gold. I think I definitely need to look towards backing soon because I can pick up my Lich Bane here. Getting a Lich Bane power spike on Lily is pretty big. All right, I think I just look for the Heimerdinger here. I did walk over a ward, he spotted me. But yeah, that's the ult turret. All you have to do in a, that, in a situation like this, he places his ult turret down. Literally all you gotta do as a jungler is just stay back and just like if you're Nidalee just keep throwing spears Make sure he doesn't walk that way like he will stand under his turret for the most time That's how to gank a harmoning if you dive this turret you're guaranteed to die So that's a lot of mistakes I see, like that's a mistake a lot of people see making against the Heimerdinger He places that ult turret down and just tries to fight now his ult turret's gone at that point I literally just walk up to him and completely delete him. I mean it was it was that simple really Elias has a Zonias and he didn't even use the Zonias active, which is quite interesting. Oh, there it is. At this point, Rift Herald is definitely a good objective to get. I mean, we have the pressure for it, we could easily take it. There's nothing in my bot side jungle for Rek'Sai to take, so that's just easy for me. Um... Now right here, his top side camps are up, but uh, the mid lane, there were two people that we could just pick up, so we definitely want to go for that. All right, here I think I look for the back. Okay, actually, our team wants to push this. It's pretty good to use the herald here. We just got the herald. We can definitely pressure this down because we just killed two of their people. Now the other two are like the, the rest of the team isn't really reacting, so that's an easy time to get in herald and the inhib. This is the reason like why you want to pick those heralds up. This is just you can get so much pressure off just a herald. If you can kill some like maybe two people mid lane and you have your entire team grouped like that, and uh, maybe not in your top lane, that doesn't really matter, but. Herald just opens up the map for you. Like, every single game, if you have the pressure for it as a jungler, you should definitely look towards doing the Herald. Like, I see so many people forget it, and Herald can switch games if you use it correctly. If you just... If you have a slight lead and use Herald to just shove down an inhibitor straight up, then it's just game over from that point. Like, right now, this game becomes really hard for us to lose, because the Kog'Maw is really fat. He is 10, 3, and 6... Uh, 7, sorry. And then I'm uh, 7, 1, and 8. I mean... 
at that point, there's really nothing to do for them because I can just keep healing the Kog'Maw, give him a lot of attack speed boost while sustaining him up, and then there's nothing they can really do. They won't have to damage to one-shot the Kog'Maw and just get through him. The only thing is, if they have healing reduction on the Kog'Maw, and then I try to heal him, my heal will go down by quite a lot, and that's the situation where they actually can kill the Kog'Maw. But then, again, it takes Kog'Maw like 4 auto attacks to kill anyone on our team right now, or like, not 4 auto attacks, just like 2 seconds and like 26 auto attacks because his attack speed is insane. So that's like, this having a Kog'Maw AD carry with Nidalee, if you if you have a Kog'Maw AD carry, picking Nidalee is so good. You can definitely go Ardent Sense for Nidalee with like the Chalice as well and just completely support your Kog'Maw. Give him insane amounts of boost and that way like you just win. Obviously don't rush Chalice and Ardent just relying on your Kog'Maw every game. The, what I did this game is pr uh, precisely what you should be doing. You just rush that Lich Bane, get the uh, damage proc from that and then just go for a Zonias. Or maybe like a death cap, what's that? Well, however far you're ahead, Sony has usually the, the safest option because it allows you to dive in after you land a spear, one shot someone with your Q, or like with your second Q, I guess. And then that way you can get a lead that easily. Now, also, the main thing I had to remind myself, like you have to remind yourself to keep doing, is keeping that farm up. I have 136 CS right now. Compared to the enemy team, that's pretty much on par with their AD carry and solo laners, but that's really far ahead of Rek'Sai, and that's really where you want to be at. I'm on par with my lane CS, which is slightly sad, I suppose, but there's been more fighting than actual laning, so it kind of lacks CS on that front. Usually, on Italy, you should be able to be on par with your lane CS at all times, whether you're fighting a lot or whether you're just this game, where it's pretty much more of a, like, a type of pressure game and a lot of fights. That just impacts your CS a little bit, but usually, once you're, if you're equal with like your AD carries, slash mid top laner, you're, you should be good on Italy. That's exactly where you want to be at. Now right here I complete my Zonias, that's pretty much gonna be the, the moment in time where as Nidalee you can literally just walk into the enemy team, go for it, just one shot anyone and then just press Zonias to save yourself and then get back out that way and hoping your team follows up. But that's like, that's the item you need really to be able to make plays. It's just As soon as you land that spear you can flash W in and then just go for it. Now here we could have ended the game but then sadly the inhibitor respawned and that forces us to, um, to back off again. To make kill the inhibitor and then they respawn again we have to force a fight again and then here they die and i get re very close to dying so i need to be very careful so at that point we have to back off again sad inhibitor respawn but hey now right here the Triss was actually chasing me down it looks like and i remember this bit it was quite funny i was like all right um i'll just hop over the wall or something i see Triss coming in i see like all right she's probably gonna chase me so i can just stand still right there and as soon as she chases me, like, as soon as she gets the jump animation going, you can throw, uh, throw the spear into that direction from where she jumped from, because at that point, it's going to guarantee to land her if she jumps, like, towards you. So it's really, like, an easy hit. As soon as you land that spear on Nidalee, Triss gets close, you just cue her with your other form and she's gone. Like, this is a very easy tactic you can pull off against, like, any, cha any champion with, the, like, those types of jumps. You can pull that off and then just be fine. Now, here, I do believe my next few items will be, like... In this specific game, obviously, it's going to be over by now because of just the amount of pressure you got early game and got going and really the fights you got going that way and Kog'Maw got fat. All you have to do to finish off this build, if this game tends to drag on us, Nidalee, if you have a Kog'Maw on your team, you can easily just finish off with Ardent Sensor and Chalice. Just completely protect him, make sure he's safe, and then that way it's going to be guaranteed to win fights with it. Now here, I have 2400 gold, so I pick up an Ardent Sensor. I could have picked either Chalice or Ardent Sensor, really. I mean, I guess at this point, having the Ardent Sensor is a little bit better than Chalice because it gives him more attack speed. And, I mean, he doesn't really have to heal that much because he's just so far ahead that he just kills anyone before they even get close if they have enough attack speed. Now, just look at the... This is how you play teamfights. You keep healing the Kog'Ma at any situation you can to give him the attack speed, give him the attack speed. Because Nidalee it's, herself is really bad at just team fights, and you have to be with your AD carry trying to heal him, trying to protect him a lot. Here I get low, I keep healing the Kog'Maw even though I am low because it gives him attack speed and that's the way you gotta play team fights. Obviously if you get low and the, the AD carries full HP you don't wanna heal him, you wanna heal yourself but usually at team fight wise, this is the way you play. You stick with your AD carry if he's not in insanely far behind. You stick with anyone really that's good enough ahead in your team that you can just keep healing, keep sustaining them up and then keep poking them at the same time so to help them out. Like right here I'm just backing my Kog'Maw as much as possible. Right there, Katarina jumps in, you queue him, and then I just try to kill him as fast as possible. And that's just the way you play later game, Nidalee. Just stay with your AD carry, usually, and then that way you can 
keep healing him, keep sustaining him, and then you just win the fight that way. Because Nelly herself is really bad at team fights. You mean you can land a spear and just assassinate someone with like a dive in Zonias. There's a good chance you can die for that. And playing it with your AD carry and then you're playing off your heal with the attack speed boost is a lot better of a way to go. So yeah. That's pretty much how you play Nidalee. If you have any questions on Nidalee, make sure to ask them in the comments below. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up as well. And yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!